important property in enantiomers are what are known as the stereogenic carbons. Now, the formal definition of a stereogenic carbon is any carbon in which if you switch two groups on that carbon, any two groups on that carbon, you form another stereoisomer. So, in terms of enantiomers, that simply means we're looking for a carbon which is attached to four different things. Now, it's important to note that all molecules which can form enantiomers do have a stereogenic carbon. However, just because a molecule does have a stereogenic carbon does not ensure that it does have an enantiomer, so it's a little confusing. So let's look for the stereogenic carbon in this molecule here. So we can't have this one be it because you have three hydrogens here. It can't be this one because you also have three hydrogens. It can't be this one because you have two hydrogens. So it can only be this carbon here, the second one, because it has one hydrogen, a bromo group, a methyl group, and an ethyl group. Now why do we care about stereogenic carbons and enantiomers? Well, we care about them because it helps with the naming. You can't simply name an enantiomer based off of its molecular formula because all pairs of enantiomers share the same molecular formula. Therefore, we have to use a different system, the RS system. So how does that work? Well, the first thing you do in naming these enantiomers is you look for the stereogenic carbons. If you have more than one, then you have to use, do the same process twice. But in, case, in this case, we only have one. So the first thing we do is order the four groups on that stereogenic carbon in importance. Now, importance on, in groups is simply determined by their molecular weight. The higher the molecular weight, the more important that group is. So in this case, what do we have here? We have a hydrogen, a carbon, a carbon, and a bromide on this stereogenic carbon. So the most important group is obviously the bromide. Well, the least important group is the hydrogen. But we're not sure about which group is more important, the ethyl group or the methyl group. So if the two atoms attached directly to the stereogenic carbon are identical, you have to look at the atoms attached to those carbons as well. So in this case, this carbon here has three hydrogens attached to it, while this carbon here has a methyl and two hydrogens attached to it. Therefore, since this carbon here has an additional carbon attached to it, this would be the second most important, and this would be the third most important. Now that we know the four different importances in this stereogenic carbon, we now imagine that we have the least important atom, in this case, the hydrogen, going into the paper, so you only see three groups. Now, this is how we determine R and S. We simply see in descending order which direction it goes. If the descending order of importance goes in a clockwise direction, it is known as R. However, if the descending importance is going in a counterclockwise direction, it is known as S. So what would it be in this case? Well, you have the bromide as the most important, you have the ethyl as the second most important, and you have the methyl as being the least important. So, you have the order of descending importance going counterclockwise. Therefore, it would be known as S. So, in this case, this molecule here would be called S2-bromobutane. Now, what about its enantiomer? Well, let's look at that. Well, we know that we only have one stereogenic center, and we know that the least important group is the hydrogen. So, we imagine that going into the paper again. Now, we have the bromide being the most important, the ethyl group being the second most important, and the methyl group being the third most important. So the order of descending importance goes in a clockwise direction. Therefore, it is known as R. So this molecule would simply be known as R2-bromobutane. Now, two enantiomers always have to have a different R or an S. Two enantiomers cannot be both S. That would mean that they're simply the same molecule. So we always know that in enantiomer pairs, one always has to be S and one always has to be R.